All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. We have our friend Marley Bird with us today, and she's going to be teaching us how to make these festive crochet snowflakes. My name is Renee L from Yarn Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class with the pattern and the yarn. So please feel free to drop your questions in the chat, and I'll make sure that Marley answers them or I can answer them myself. While we're getting ready to kick things off, um, Felicia already asked where you guys are calling in, joining us from. Let us know if you've ever made a little snowflake or anything kitschy before. So yeah. let us know in the chat. Perfect. Over to you, Marley. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to a Michaels Community Classroom. I love teaching these little courses because you get a chance to sample out some different stitches, play around with a free pattern, and it's just it's just a good time. I will let you know this pattern is fairly easy, but and I would love it if you would work along with me. Uh, if at any point in time you need to set your hook down and just watch the show, essentially, uh, just like Felicia said, this is getting recorded, so you can go back and rewatch and pick up anything you might have missed. Um, more than anything, let's just have a good time. It's sort of like you're doing a lunch and learn, depending on where you are in the in the world. Um, and I would love to have you just be a part of it. Now, these little ornaments. I want to give you a, a little tip. Do you need to have a tree to make an ornament? No. These could absolutely be decorations for your gifts. Like maybe you have a gift box and you just want to wrap wrap a yarn around instead of like tying a bow, put a little snowflake on top. And then that person could then use it on their um, tree if they want to hang it on a tree. I actually have these ornaments. I've made them before. I have them uh, hanging on the doorknob of my bookshelf, which sounds funny. I have like a, a cabinet, a curio cabinet sort of thing. And I have my, my bookshelves in there. And so on the doors of that cabinet, I have these um, snowflakes hanging on there just as very simple decoration. So all of that is to say, you don't have to have a Christmas tree to make one of these. They're very handy, they're fun to make. And really you can use any yarn you want. We're gonna use Red Heart Super Saver today. I'm gonna use a smaller size hook, but again, you could use any size hook you want. Any yarn, any size hook, because gauge really doesn't matter on these, right? We just wanna make some fun snowflakes. So go ahead, grab some yarn that you have lying around, grab yourself a hook. This one is a size four millimeter, I think, a four. I didn't wanna get an F. I thought I, I, the F is just a little bit too small for me. So I went up just a little bit, but that's how that goes. So I'm gonna go down to my hands. We're going to get started following the pattern. I know that Renee has already put that pattern link in the chat, so you can grab that link whenever you're ready. This is the Red Heart Super Saver. I'm not sure if the red will be just a little bit too much on here or not, so we're going to give it a try, but you guys can let me know. But we have red, and then I did pull out some of my, my pink, because if you guys know me at all, I love pink. So um, I pulled out pink to give that a try also. So Red Heart Super Saver, let's go ahead, jump in with the snowflake ornament. You can see here, I do have a stitch marker. And you know what? I'm just gonna call this out. It's the elephant in the room, all right? At least for me. My manicure <laughs> is awful. I am just like all of you right now. I am working to the bone to get as many knitting and crochet gifts done before the holiday season is over. And I have not had a chance to go to see my manicurist. So I apologize. But hey, if I don't call it out, somebody's going to call it out. Just know it, it hurts me just as bad as it hurts you to not have my nails done. It's, if you know me at all, you know my nails are always done. So this is really rare. Um, so you can see I'm just as busy as all of you for sure. Okay, um, I'm going to start off and I'll show you how to do that slip knot. We're going to take our yarn and we're going to do a slip knot and put that slip knot directly onto our hook. So for a slip knot, you can take the tail, put it on the palm of your hand. Wrap your tail around your forefinger and your middle finger, and then cross over. Rotate your hand over, and then I will just pinch that right there underneath my pinky and my ring finger. Go underneath this front loop, grab that back loop, pull it off your fingers, and as you pull that, you'll see you have a slip knot. Now, I know there are other people who will just wrap it around their finger a couple times, like I think it's just three times. I got to do this. They'll wrap it around their fingers like three times, right? Is it three times or two times? I don't know. I say I can't even do that. <laughs> wrap it around your finger, cross over, rotate underneath and pull and you get yourself a cool little slip knot. If you have another way of doing a slip knot, do it that way. Do whatever works for you. It's just a slip knot. 
Okay, so we are going to start off with a chain six. Thank you, Ashley. So we're gonna chain six. So I'm holding my hook. I like to hold my hook like a pencil. You can absolutely hold your hook like a knife. It doesn't matter either way. We're gonna take our hook and just going from left underneath the yarn and back up towards the right. So we've wrapped our hook with that yarn. And then that hook portion, we're gonna use that to grab the yarn and pull it through that slip knot. Now, if you're new to this, one thing you could do is that hook there, if you, instead of keeping it to the side, if you point it down, it makes it easier to come through that slip knot because the slip knot look, kind of looks like a teardrop. And so now the hook can come through the, the slip knot without snagging anything. Don't tighten that up once it's come, come through, but now you've done one chain. Everybody say this with me. The chain or the loop on my hook, let's call it this, let's do this again. The loop on my hook does not count as a chain. It does not count as a stitch. You never count the loop on your hook as a stitch or a chain. If you come across a pattern that has it written like that, they are not using standards. You never count the loop on your hook as a chain, all right? So we're gonna make six of those. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Six of those. It then tells you to join with a slip stitch to form a ring. So we're gonna come all the way down here to this first chain we did. It'll be right next to that slip knot. And we're going to just come down here, put our hook into it. Wrap our yarn. Pull that yarn through the chain you just went into. Okay. Now I'm going to pull that yarn that's right there, that loop there. I'm going to pull it through the loop on my hook. And that's a slip, a slip knot or slip stitch. I'm sorry. That's a slip stitch. I now have a ring, a circle here that I can work and create a really fun um, snowflake. Everybody with me so far? Okay, I would get closer, but can you see how it doesn't focus very well when I do that? So that's why I'm down here. I hope that's okay with everybody. I figured if anything, you can zoom in on your screen, but if I come up here, it the camera does not want to focus. Down here, it's focused, so just so that you know, okay? All right, round one, we will chain one stitch and we will single crochet 12 into the ring. Now, what does that mean? That means we're going to work a single crochet, but we are not going to place them into any of those chains. We will work around those chains into that big hole right there in the center of our project. That makes things so super duper easy. I'm also going to use my marker here to mark the top of the very first single crochet we do. So that way we know where it is and it will help us with counting. So here we go. If you're holding your loop here, Take your hook, go into the big hole in the center of your ring. So I've put my, my hook into the center of the ring. I'm going to yarn over my hook and then pull that loop up. So I have two loops on my hook. We'll yarn over and draw through both of those loops. I don't know if you can see here, there's a V right there behind the loop on my hook. I'm gonna put my marker right there into that V. That means that is the top of the single crochet I just finished. So that's the first single crochet of the round. So I need to have 11 more. So I go into the ring, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, draw through two. Into the ring, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, draw through two into the ring, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, draw through two. I'm gonna keep doing this. You will do the same. And if at a point you lose count of how many you have done, not a problem. One of the benefits of having that stitch marker there is we can go back and know that that's the very first one and then we can count all of our stitches. So I have no idea how many I have. So I'm going to pause for a second. Notice I, I always extend that out so it doesn't go anywhere. I come back. I find my stitch marker. 
I can see there's a V right there. So I'm gonna go and count all the Vs. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Vs. So I, ha I have to get to 12. But you can see here, it's like, oh, I've run out of room. Well, the benefit of working around those chains is that these stitches, they actually slide. So if you just grab them, they'll slide around that ring. You could just smush them up and then just keep on going. So you smush them up. This would be number 10, number 11, and number 12, all right? So I have 12 single crochets all the way around my ring. And I'm gonna slip stitch to the first single crochet. See why that stitch marker is so convenient? Because now I can come over here, I can go right underneath that V where that stitch marker is, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on my hook. And now I've joined, so I can remove my marker. And essentially I have another circle, but now I have 12 stitches on my circle, okay? All right. The good news is we should be able to get through a couple of these in class. So we'll be able to do this a couple times. So even if you just want to watch the first time and then join me on the second one, we can do that for sure. I'm going to grab myself some yarn here just so that I have it to work with. That was round one. We're going to jump to round two. So we chain one, single crochet in the first stitch. So where I did that slip stitch, that's the first stitch. So I'm gonna single crochet right into that first stitch. Just like before, I wanna put a marker into that V behind the loop on my hook. Okay. Now you'll see that there are some brackets and that's because everything that's inside of those brackets, you're gonna do the number of times written outside of the brackets. So we are going to chain three. So one, two, three and single crochet into the next single crochet. So you have that V there, go underneath both loops of the V, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So that was one time in the bracket. We now have to do it 10 more times. So chain three, one, two, three, next single crochet and single crochet. One, two, three, next single crochet and single crochet. One, two, three, next single crochet and single crochet. One, two, three, next single and single. One, two, three, next single and single. One, two, three, next single in single. One, two, three. Next single and 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 single. Now I'm gonna count, because we should have 11 of those, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So I've done 11. And then it says half double crochet into the first single crochet and join um, and form the last stitch. So half double crochet into the first single crochet to join and form the last stitch. So we will have 12 chain three spaces. So what happens here is if I were to join right there with my slip with my slip stitch like I did before, I'm not gonna get that sort of, it's not actually a pico, but that chain sort of uh, section. But when I do a half double crochet, the half double crochet is gonna take the, the place of those chains. And so I'm gonna get the illusion of having those chains. So I'm gonna get the effect I want. Now to do a half double crochet, I yarn over my hook. I'm gonna go to where my marker is, right? Cause we know we marked, that's the first stitch. So I'm gonna go underneath both Vs, the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, draw through all three of those. Now it puts my finished loop right in the middle of one of those like chain arches. And now if I extend that up and then remove the marker, see how it gives you the illusion that you have all of those chain arches and they're not missed. Can you see that? All right, pretty cool, it's pretty cool. So that was round two. I'm gonna grab some more yarn here. How we doing, everybody? I'm gonna this. I'll just pause a little bit to make sure you're catching up, or maybe a lot of you are watching this first one and then you're gonna join in on the second one, which is totally fine. I get it. And just a reminder, this is getting recorded, so you will be able to watch this, no problem at all. All right, picked it up. We're gonna go on to round three. We chain one, and we will single crochet on to that half double crochet. So we don't do anything different. We literally, we're just gonna go into this big space there. We're gonna go into that space, yarn over our hook, pull up a loop and create a single crochet. Just like before, I'm gonna mark my first stitch. I like to mark my first stitch, you guys, and I have been crocheting a really long time, but it just makes my life so much easier to know exactly where that stitch is, okay? I single crocheted over that half double, now we have a star and we have parentheses. The star indicates a repeat section. Parentheses indicate that everything that's inside of those parentheses, you will do all of that into one stitch or one space. That's all going into one stitch or one space. So we're going to do two double crochets, a chain three and two double crochets in the next space. I'm guessing in the next chain three space. And then let's keep reading. It says single crochet in the next space. My guess is the next chain three space. Repeat from star around ending at the double star. And then we will join with the slip stitch to the first single. So here we go. We did a single crochet right here into this chain three space where we started, right? We are not chain three space. We did that over our half double crochet, which represents a sort of that chain three space that we were doing. In the next space, this was our chain three space. We are going to do two double crochets. So let's do that. Let's yarn over our hook, go into this next space, yarn over, pull up a loop. So you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. To do that again, yarn over your hook, go into that space, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over your hook, draw through two, yarn over your hook, draw through two. We're not done yet because now we have to chain three, one, two, three, and we will do two more double crochets in that same space. Yarn over your hook, insert into the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. I have to take a drink of water real quick, guys, sorry. <coughs> Okay, so that was one. We'll do one more. So all of that, what I'm doing like from thumb, from unpainted thumbnail to other, to painted thumbnail, there's two doubles, chain three and two doubles all into one chain three space. And that's everything that was written inside of those parentheses. Okay, so now we're gonna single crochet in the next chain three space. So I'm gonna come over here and we'll just do one single crochet there, which is very similar to what we did over here, right? Only over here, it was over that half double. But this is in the space. Now we're gonna go to the next space and we're going to do everything that was in that parentheses set again. So yarn over our hook, go to the next space and work two double crochets. One. And two. Chain three and do two more double crochets into that same space. Now, if you're like me, you want your snowflakes to be a little bit tight. So you'll notice as I'm creating my stitches, I will tend to hold the post of the stitch as I'm yarning over and pulling through. I'm just making sure that those yarn overs that I did before are not getting too long. Like they're not getting out of shape. They're staying the same and the correct size. So for example, let me show you here. So there's the single. I'm gonna go and I'm doing the parentheses again. So I do my double, I pull up my three, 
I yarn over, I essentially like pinch my fabric underneath my, my hooks and then I'll pull through two. Then I yarn over, I move my, my thumb up, I pinch my fabric again and I pull through two. It just makes my stitches really consistent. It also allows you, as you pinch your fabric here, you can kind of pull, pull on it against your hook and it makes those change just that little bit stretched out. You're not extending them. You're stretching the fibers just a little bit so you can pull that hook through easily. But then the minute I let go, everything goes back to normal. So I'm not actually making my chains larger. I'm just making it a little easier for me to get into them. Just a little special tip. I don't know if you can tell that very well, but that's one of the reasons you'll notice I always put my, my thumb and, four, and middle finger, I guess, up here and I hold on to the posts of my stitches as I make them. Just makes makes things a little bit nicer. And you can see it's already starting to look like a really cool point. Getting some cool points going. So I'm gonna keep going. No, we do not turn our work, Judy. We do not turn our work. This is all just worked in the round, in, in continuous rounds. They're called, these would be called joined rounds that you do not turn. All right, let's keep going here. You kind of just keep going until all of these are used up, right? Like, obviously we're gonna count and make sure, but as you're just cruising along, it's pretty easy just to get a good idea of where you are just by looking at your actual work and reading it a bit, not being a slave to the pattern. All right, start to start. So I have two more. So let's just think this through. We're going to do our single crochet here. We're gonna do everything in our parentheses right here, which will bring us right up to that double star in our pattern. And that's where it tells us to repeat to the double star until we run out, we can only get to the double star. And then we're gonna to join to that stitch marker right there. It's gonna make things very easy. All right, so we're gonna yarn over and do our I said yarn over my hook and do my double, do my second double, do my chain three, and then do my two doubles. There's one, and here's the second one. And so that would be the end of my, my repeat, right? That's to my star star. So I'm gonna join right down there. I'm gonna take my marker out so that, no, I'm not. You can easily see there's, there's where my marker is. See how easy the marker makes it? You don't have to wonder where you're supposed to put your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that through the loop on your hook. Now you can take your marker out. Let's extend it up and just take a peek at it. You can see, if you wanted to stop here, you absolutely could. You got yourself like a cool little star. But we're gonna do that little extra step on round four, and that will bring us to the end of this snowflake. See how easy that is, you guys? I mean, really, what, 20, 25 minutes? It's so easy. Okay, <clears throat> round four. We're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four. Slip stitch in the same stitch as your join. So I'm gonna come down here where I joined it. I'm gonna slip stitch. So I can see where I joined right there. And I will do another slip stitch. Can you see that? Now we have a star again. So we know that that means we have a repeat. We're gonna chain two. So let's do that. We're gonna chain two. And then we have parentheses. So we know everything that's in those parentheses. We're gonna do that in the next wherever the stitch or space. And this tells us the chain three space. So we are going to do a single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain five, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, all in this next space. <laughs> a lot of stitches. All right, so let's see if I can keep track. We're going to single crochet into that next chain three space, right? Right there. So I singled, I chain three. I do another single. Then I chain five. Do a single again. Chain three. 
and then do another single. So I put all of that into that chain three space and I get sort of like that fleur de lis look there, right? Now I'm gonna chain two and I'm back to another parentheses. So I'm gonna slip stitch, chain four, slip stitch into the next single crochet. So I've gotta find where the single crochet is and here's what I do. I know that I just worked in a chain three. I also know that there's a double right there and a double right there and I can find there's my single. There's my single I had done before. So into the top of that single, I'm gonna do a slip stitch, chain four, and a slip stitch. You see that? Whew. All right, now we're gonna repeat from star. So we chain two. We're back to a chain three space. So we're gonna single. I need to get some yarn, guys. The stitch marker is making it so much easier, Sophia says. Yes, it is. Sophia, you know what? That is seriously one of the top things I tell all crocheters when I teach classes, whether they are advanced classes or beginner classes. I am always advocating the, the stitch marker. All right, so we have our first single crochet inside our parentheses. So we're going to chain three. Do the next single crochet chain five, do the next single crochet, chain three, and then the last single crochet of that group, we get our little flirt of lee then we chain two, find your single crochet from the previous row, slip stitch, chain four, and slip stitch. Then we're going to repeat again. Let's take a peek real quick. Looking pretty good. Isn't that cool? I told you guys it's super easy. Super easy. Chris Lopez, she's been crocheting for 45 years and still uses stitch markers. Because you're a girl after my own heart, Chris. All right. So we're going to single crochet. We're, it, we're doing our repeat again. Single, chain three, single chain five, single, chain three, single. All of that was in that chain three space. Chain two, find your single crochet, do a slip stitch, chain four, and then do a slip stitch again into that same space. I mean, seriously, I just want to put it down each time to take a peek at it. Isn't that fun? Can I get an amen, Renee? <laughs> this is so pretty. It's so fun. I got to take a while real quick. I'm really like, what I love about these nice little like motif patterns, like we could call it an ornament, but also you can make a garland out of it. You could build this up into a table runner. I love these patterns where you can make it your own. Right, right. I see somebody's asking what size hook I'm using. I am using, I think it's a G, a four millimeter, a four millimeter hook. Um, the F hook, I just felt like it was too small for how I crochet. It was just too small. Like it was just going to be, be way too tight for me. Um, so I went up just a little bit, but that's all right. It means I just have a little bit of a bigger, bigger snowflake. I love that once you have done one of these, you're going to find how repetitive repetitive it is and how easy to memorize it is. Um, like at first you look at it, you're like, gosh, that looks really complicated. And then you do it like you do one of these little fleur de lis pieces and you're like, oh, well, that's that's not hard at all. Like, what was I what was I thinking? Um, and, you know, by in no time, you're just cruising along. You're not even looking at the pattern anymore, which is just convenient and just wonderful so that you can just relax in a time where a lot of us are stressing about trying to make sure either we have enough gifts done or enough items made for craft fairs or, I mean, whatever it may be. Um, 
you know, who knows? I will say that these little things, like they make really cute. Um, I know it sounds funny, but you put it like with a gift card or something. It makes a cute little gift for like a teacher. Maybe you're looking to find what to make a teacher. Um, they're, they're just, they're just that little extra something special. It doesn't have to be much. It doesn't take much. And then they can use it on their tree if they want to, or maybe, maybe you're a teacher and you want to make something special for your students and you don't want it to take a whole lot of time. I mean, you could get a boatload of, of snowflakes out of one skein of super saver. Maybe you get like a super saver ombre. Um, and I mean, then you have a bunch of different shades that kind of flow through and that would be something fun to do. Something, something real easy. You could make these and then maybe you take a picture and have, you know, like hot glue a picture of it or on it or something so that the kids can give it to the parents for Christmas or holidays or whatever they are celebrating. I don't know, just trying to think a little bit about the gift giving season because tis the season, right? I am in the midst of huge, huge projects where I have lots of quickie patterns that are going on and making quick items, quick gifts. It's just, it's a lot of fun. All right. So like the other one, we had to go until it was a double star. And I, la I literally didn't even pay attention to that. I just know that I must be to that point because this is the start of my round. I forgot to mark my marker. Here I am talking about how important the marker is. And I forgot to put my marker there. I would have known quickly if I had my marker there. But I know I joined with that slip stitch to start, right? And then I chained four. So I'm at the beginning of my round and it says join with the slip stitch in the slip stitch of the last round. So I'm going to join right down there in that same spot. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to go to that same spot where I joined last time. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull that loop through. And then I like essentially to chain one just to lock everything in place. And then we're going to cut this leave a nice long tail. Now I'm going to, before I cut this, I'm going to give you guys a suggestion. This, it says add a hanging loop. If you want to, if you wanted to, I'm going to give you a suggestion. Before I cut, I chained one. Maybe I just keep chaining, All right? Maybe I'm going to, instead of adding a loop, I'm going to do my loop right now. I'm just going to chain. I have no idea how many I'm chaining. Chain until your heart's content. Is that big enough to put on a tree? Probably not. Let's just chain a little bit more and then come back down. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good size, right? That looks like a pretty good size. So chain, if you wanted to come back down here where that slip stitch is, go back into that whole area and slip stitch again to join your loop. Very similar to like what we were doing down here. So you slip stitched, now do that chain Cut your tail, leaving a nice long loop so we can weave that in. Pull this out. I'm gonna give that a tug. But now I don't have to like do a whole lot of extra finishing because I've already added my, my finishing changes to put, put on the tree. And so this part here, I just take my tapestry needle, thread this onto my tapestry needle. I'm on the wrong side of my my snowflake here. And I'm just going through some of the stitches just to secure, secure this end here. And I am gonna come up, I'm just gonna pop through like the first chain here maybe, maybe this first chain over here just to kind of make it a little bit sturdy. Not that it really needs to be, it's not like somebody's gonna be hanging on it, you know, unless you have a cat and then they're gonna like be like challenge accepted. Um, and then just come down here and just, just weave it in enough. Cause you know, if this becomes some sort of a, an heirloom little piece in the future, you want to make sure that it, it does stand the test of time. So you don't want to uh, cheapen the time that you take just to weave in your ends. It doesn't, it's not that long y'all. Just weave it in and out several times. I can trim that up. I can do the same with this first one. This one's real easy because I can literally just go around where I did all those single crochets and just thread this through that because I'm not, it's not a adjustable ring. So I don't have to worry about it coming apart. That's why we did those chains. So I can just pop this in a few of those. 
And then I will reverse my direction and just come back a little bit and be done. And we're good. Look at that. Look how cute. Any of you finish yours yet? Let's make another one. Let's see how fast we can make another one real quick. So we did red. Let's do pink this time. Because I love pink. Put this over here. What do you think, Renee? Digging it? I love it. We were just talking about how, in terms of modifications, it would be super cute to add beads to it as well. Yes, absolutely. All right. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to go quickly on this one, guys. Okay. I'm not going to go very slow. We're just going to go and we're, let's just see how fast we can make one. So we're going to chain six. Join with a slip stitch to the first chain. Chain one. Now we're going to do 12 single crochets into this entire ring. Remember, we'll take the time. I'll mark my first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. Now we're on round two, chain one, single crochet in the first single crochet. My marker in there. Now we'll do chain three, single crochet in the next. Keep going here. Anybody like just kind of mesmerized watching me crochet? I'm not that I think that did come out. That did not come out as like an ego thing. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant sometimes I will just sit back and when I'm supposed to be learning something, I will just sit and just watch the person knit or crochet because I think it's just fascinating and there's something really soothing about watch it watching it getting done by somebody else. I completely agree. And it's okay. just very calming, especially if it's to come out like, Hey, do you enjoy watching me? <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, nice I... to watch them come together so fast with these small projects. You just feel great right away. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. This is the one where you join with your half double. So I'm going to join with my half double. Take my marker out. This is where I chain one, I single crochet around that half double. See how fast this is, you guys? I'm already on round three. So I around that half double. Now into this next area here, I'm gonna do two doubles. So one and two, chain three, and then two doubles. Everybody with me on that so far? All right, and then in the next space, I do a single crochet. So we're gonna do that all the way around. So two doubles, chain three, and then two doubles. You know, there's somebody out there who started doing the second one just when I did, and they are racing me right now. They're like, oh, I'm gonna beat her. <laughs> Because there's always one of us out there. And I say one of us because that would totally be me. I'd be like, let's see how fast I can make it compared to the teacher. You know, it's the little things in life. I think you're saying we need a new type of Olympics. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's, I mean, it's, it's just funny. And sometimes I will do it subconsciously. I won't even do it like on purpose. But then I'll realize that I'm trying to go so fast. I'm like, why are you going so fast? And I'm like, oh, it's because I'm, subconsciously competing. Um, you know, and I was a, I was a college athlete and then my brother and sisters, my brother and sister and I competed a lot growing up. So I think it's just one of those like learned habits. So <laughs> I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing. I'm just saying it happens. 
Question so, for you. Do you find that when you crochet really fast, your tension is a little bit tighter or is that just me? Um, you know what, because I pinch all my stitches regularly, I, my tension is, is usually the same because oh. I, I keep things very consistent. I make sure that my loops are always the same size as my hook. And I keep, I'm, I keep all of my loop tension down here the same. Did you just do that to help people catch up? So that way I paused. <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was asking for me. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. Good tip though, with the pinching. Yeah. Like it'll yeah. keep consistency. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole reason we have different size hooks is to make sure that we are regulating the size of the loops that we're creating. So if we are creating loops, but we're not making those loops the same size as the hook that we're using, then the hook size really doesn't matter. Because if you're just going willy nilly anyways, then it doesn't matter. I want to make sure I have enough. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that, that was right, right? Yeah, it's six. Okay. We're on round four. Um, so does that make sense? Like as long as your loop is the size of your hook, you, you keep tension really well. But if you're somebody who crochets and like your loop is that big, you know, you have all that space from your hook, like in all honesty, I could use a bigger hook in that, in that amount of space. So I, I want my, my yarn, my chains, my stitches to be the same size as my hook. That's why I change my hook sizes, not the way I crochet. All right. So we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four, slip stitch into the same slip stitch. And remember last time I had forgotten where that one is. So I'm just going to mark that right there real quick. Just mark in the slip stitch. Cause we don't, there's nothing else really to mark. And then in here, so we chain two. This is where we're going to do our like fleur de lis. So we chain or do the single chain three, single chain five, single chain three, single chain two, find the single crochet, slip stitch, chain four and slip stitch. Notice I have not looked at the pattern yet. Like that's purely from memory. You guys see that? Chain two, single, chain three, single, chain five, single, chain three, single, Chain two, find your slip stitch, slip, chain four, and slip, chain two. How's everybody doing out there, Renee, as I'm going along? Because I can't look away. Oh, God. Um, mostly pretty conversational. Some ideas on how to glitterify our snowflakes. How would you do great. that? Um, dusting lightly with some glitter paint which oh, I think is idea. brilliant. That's and also, idea. yes, they agree that they do like to watch folks. Um, some of them said they used to watch their grandma and aunt, which is lovely. Yep. I used to watch my grandma and that's when I, I had asked her for years and years and years to teach me. And she was like, well, you know, one day, honey, one day, because I, I, we didn't live close to each other. And um, then finally we did one lived close to each other and she did teach me and I no pun intended you guys I was hooked from the moment I created my first stitches which I thought were single crochets but were just a row of slip stitches on top of chains but I was so addicted to this whole process of making something out of just sticks and string essentially and I was like this is like magic I am a magician and <laughs> I just, I fell in love with it. And then, I mean, funny story, it didn't even occur to me that I could make something other than a blanket. Like I was like, that's what you make. Cause that's what my grandma made. She never made anything else. She just made blankets. So in my mind, for whatever reason, I was like, I crochet, I make blankets. So one day I'm sitting on the couch in my condo in college. I mean, total party girl, right? I'm sitting on the couch and my roommate's boyfriend comes in and he uh, looks at me with this piece of crochet sitting on my lap and I'm crocheting and I'm watching probably like, I don't even know, like Dawson's Creek or something, right? 
um one two three four five and he goes oh you're doing that knitting thing I was like oh it's not knitting it's crochet he's like oh all right are, are you making a scarf and I I swear to you guys you got to see my face you got to see my face for this so hold on like <laughs> oh gosh where's my where's oh that's because that's sound I don't want sound hold on I'm, I'm gonna be there okay so I'm crocheting he's like what are you making a scarf and I'm looking like this about no Psh, who's this guy and I look down on my lap and what I have on my lap is the length of a king size blanket that is six inches wide so I'm looking and I go well I'll be darned I can stop right now and I can have a scarf <laughs> like, who wants to make a king size blanket I can have a scarf I could be done with this project and my mind was blown <laughs> because I it just the connection of stopping early and not having a blanket did never occur to me until this guy was like, you make it a scarf. I was like, <laughs> like, I honestly, I was like, who's this idiot? You know, and then, turns out I am. I was the idiot. Um, anyways, I thought it was so funny because it, it's such it's such a true story. Like, that's really what happened. And I was like, oh, my I could make a scarf. <laughs> and so from then on out, I was making scarves for a long time. Um, because I could, right? So a king um, size yeah, scarf. Story, you guys. So all of you out there making blankets that are thinking you you want to stop, just remember Lenny Kravitz had a really big scarf. So even if you're halfway done with your blanket, you could just say it's a super scarf. Okay. So you have my permission. All right. So I've just I literally just finished. When I started this, it was um 148 it is now 149 so that just took me about 10 minutes i am going to do chains again let's count this time you know what i'm going to play around and i'm going to i'm going to do a, something different here to give you an option for something a little bit different so i'm going to just really join that in now i'm going to chain so let's do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. How about that? That looks like a pretty good size. I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to join again. Okay, I'm going to join, but I'm going to chain one and I am going to turn my work this time. I'm turning my work this time and I'm going to work up these chains and I'm just going to do, maybe I do a single crochet into each one I could do a single crochet uh yeah let's do a single crochet into each one so I'm just just keeping it real simple and all this will do oh I'm not going to do that I'm not going to do that let's go back to my roots let's go back to my slip stitches where I thought they were singles so I'm going to go into each chain and just do a slip stitch and what it's going to do is just going to make this chain look similar to an I cord it's going to just kind of give it that little just a little extra finish nothing big. So I'm just going, literally going into each chain and then just doing a slip stitch. And you could do this in a different color if you wanted, but it's going to make our, our little loop here a little bit more substantial and just look a little different. Now these, you do want to be careful. You're not doing them too tight. Just make sure they're coming through. Feel like I sound like Bob Ross. Just be real gentle as you're pulling up your loop. It wants to be a happy little camper and just lay right on top of those other chains. It doesn't want to be too tight. Just wants to rest nicely on those chains so that it can hang on your pretty little Christmas tree right over there, right next to the lights, maybe next to the other ornaments that are real special from your grandkids, your kids. Maybe some for your dog, your cats. Just wants to be a little, a little happy ornament. All right, so I've slip stitched all the way down. Do you like that? Um, and I'm just going to slip stitch into here just one more time, just into the back. I'm gonna just pick a stitch, nothing big. I'm just picking a space in the back just to kind of tack it all down. I'm gonna chain one, snip back. because I can, I'm going to weave in my ends. <laughs> Dale is laughing at me. Happy little trees and the happy little forest that is 
the holidays. Happy little loops. Yep, happy little loops. What kind of what kind of creatures live in your place? Do you have little woodland creatures in your trees? Okay. <laughs> funny I live in Indiana I think that's where Bob Ross was from I think he was from here well that's why he was so nice he was very gentle voice the original AS ASMR whatever that is <laughs> ASMR the, artist I think is the term <laughs> voice. um all right so right here I'm going to kind of do the same thing I'm just going to kind of make sure this is packed down just a little bit Oh, see, see how much more substantial that little loop is? It just looks like it's gonna, that's sturdy. That there, that's a sturdy loop. Ain't nothing getting through that loop. You can tell I'm getting comfortable because I'm cracking jokes. Um, <laughs> okay. Ta-da! So obviously the first one will take you longer than the second one will. You can do just the chains. You can do the chains and some slip stitches. Look how cute that is. So makes it a little bit more substantial. And look at this. You asked about if my stuff is tighter. I was going faster. It's the same size. Oh, wow. See? Da -da -da. There you go. What do we think? Hey, I got something for you. Here we go. <laughs> it's, you can wear them as earrings, maybe? Like, maybe you get some, like, crochet thread. You could have some really cool earrings. I mean, you can rock this out, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of being that person at the holiday Christmas party. Be that person. Tack them all over your, your Christmas uh, sweater, which can, can we appreciate the fact I wore a holiday? Like, I love, I love movie, the movie Elf. I think it's hilarious. I think it's just, it's just one of my favorite movies. So I saw this and I'm like, yeah, I got, I got to buy that. <laughs> I thought it was fitting. All right. So this is the part where I ask you guys to do sort of show and tell um, if you are watching live and you can turn on your camera and just kind of show me where you are, I would love to see, see your ornaments. So, um, if you want to just pop on, I'll just be like, yeah, look at that. Oh, De Mendoza. That's beautiful. Cher Cheryl Klein. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Sophia, look at you. That's great. Oh my gosh. You guys are doing Deborah. I'm, I'm waiting, Deborah. Let's go. Let's see it awesome she's got two going as well man you guys are just as crazy busy as i am that's so awesome sophia those are fantastic you guys have done such a great job did you have fun i mean is this one of those pieces you're like yeah i want to make some of these for my christmas tree i want to make them as gifts i want to make them and put them on gifts yes c mendoza says yes she says yes absolutely ashley says it's so much fun karen says this was fun great class I'm glad that makes me happy. These are just a joy to make you guys. And as you can see the first one, it might take you a little bit of time just to get used to stuff. And if you're unfamiliar with how to read a pattern, it can be a little confusing. Hopefully you can take the way I read the pattern today and use that for future knowledge of knowing, you know, what do brackets mean? What do parentheses mean? What do stars mean? Um, that will help you with future patterns, which is really great. Um, there's just, there's a lot of learning opportunities in these just little tiny little things. Um, so I hope that you will get a chance to make a bunch of these. Uh, you know, these can even be like little coasters. You know, you don't have the loop on there. You just do little coasters. They're just fun. They're just fun to make. So you could grab some of your scrap yarn that you have laying around, or you know what? You have my permission to go treat yourself. Just run to Michael's, grab some yarn and just be like, I got to make some ornaments. And, and nobody will tell you anything. Just say, Marley said I could. And that's it. That's all it is. If you need an actual permission slip, I actually have one. <laughs> <laughs> the the Facebook group that I run, um, we were all joking around one day and I was like, do you need a Marley made me do it permission slip? And I made like an image where it was, you know, you, I have permission to do blah, blah, blah and go buy blah, blah, blah. And it, I signed it Marley Bird. And so people literally printed it out, obviously as a joke. Um, and it just, it just makes me laugh. So you have my permission. Go, go enjoy, go check out all of the holiday decor at Michael's. Um, and just like uh, whoever it was that was mentioning like the glitter paint and stuff, they have all of that there. Grab some beads, grab some glitter, um, mod podge, put it all together, make, make something fun. And when you do be sure to share with us on social media, we love to see your projects. Like when we do these classes, we really hope that not only, I mean, I'll speak for myself. I hope that I'm teaching you 
not only how to make the items, but how to make you a better knitter, how to make you a better crocheter and have you learn more and more and grow as a crafter. So online, if you share with me, I'm the Marley Bird on Instagram or on Facebook, I'm Marley Bird on Facebook. Um, but when you share your projects, I just get excited. I get happy for you. Um, and, you know, there's just not enough happiness in the world sometimes. So if I can bring the happy to your world, please share with me because that definitely brings happiness to mine. All right, Renee, I'm going to hand it over to you. All right. Well, I'm going to have to print out that permission slip for my boyfriend. <laughs> he keeps getting mad. I bring home too much yarn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. As Marley said, don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag yarnspo. That's Y-A-R-N-S-P-O and tag all of us. As Marley said, it really makes our day. We love yeah. our jobs. We'd love to see what you're working on. If you're the person wearing the earrings to the holiday party, we want to see it. Oh my gosh. If you're wearing the Please. earrings to the holiday party, I will give you a free pattern. Like I will, I will, I will celebrate you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. All right. Enjoy your day, everyone. Bye. Bye guys.